We continue on today with chapter 9, The Correction of Error. The alertness of the ego to the errors of other egos is not the kind of vigilance the Holy Spirit would have you maintain. Egos are critical in terms of the kind of sense they stand for. They understand this kind of sense because it is sensible to them. To the Holy Spirit it makes no sense at all. To the ego it is kind and right and good to point out errors and correct them. This makes perfect sense to the ego, which is unaware of what errors are and what correction is. Errors are of the ego, and correction of errors lies in the relinquishment of the ego. When you correct a brother, you are telling him that he is wrong. He may be making no sense at the time, and it is certain that if he is speaking from the ego, he will not be making sense but your task is still to tell him he is right. You do not tell him this verbally if he is speaking foolishly. He needs correction at another level because his error is at another level. He is still right because he is a son of God. His ego is always wrong no matter what it says or does. If you point out the errors of your brother's ego you must be seeing through yours, because the Holy Spirit does not perceive his errors. This must be true, since there is no communication between the ego and the Holy Spirit. The ego makes no sense, and the Holy Spirit does not attempt to understand anything that arises from it. Since he does not understand it, he does not judge it, knowing that nothing the ego makes means anything. When you react at all to errors, you are not listening to the Holy Spirit. He has merely disregarded them, and if you attend to them, you are not hearing Him. If you do not hear Him, you are listening to your ego, and making as little sense as the brother whose errors you perceive. This cannot be correction, yet it is more than merely a lack of correction for Him. It is the giving up of correction in yourself. When a brother behaves insanely, you can heal him only by perceiving the sanity in him. If you perceive his errors and accept them, you are accepting yours. If you want to give yours over to the Holy Spirit, you must do this with his. Unless this becomes the one way in which you handle all errors, you cannot understand how all errors are undone. How is this different from telling you that what you teach, you learn? Your brother is as right as you are, and if you think he is wrong, you are condemning yourself. You cannot correct yourself. It is possible then, is it possible then for you to correct another? Yet you can see him truly because it is possible for you to see yourself truly. It is not up to you to change your brother, but merely to accept him as he is. His errors do not come from the truth that is in him, and only this truth is yours. His errors cannot change this, and can have no effect at all on the truth in you. To perceive errors in anyone, and to react to them as if they were real, is to make them real to you. You will not escape paying the price for this, not because you are being punished for it, but because you are following the wrong guide and will therefore lose your way. Your brother's errors are not of him any more than yours are of you, except his errors is real and you have attacked yourself. If you would find your way and keep it See only truth beside you, for you walk together. The Holy Spirit in you forgives all things in you and in your brother. His errors are forgiven with yours. Atonement is no more separate than love. Atonement cannot be separate because it comes from love. 
Any attempt you make to correct a brother means that you believe correction by you is possible. And this can only be the arrogance of the ego. Correction is of God, who does not know of arrogance. The Holy Spirit forgives everything because God created everything. Do not undertake his function or you will forget yours. Accept only the function of healing in time because that is what time is for. God gave you the function to create in eternity. You do not need to learn that, but you do need to learn to want it. For that, all learning was made. This is the Holy Spirit's use of an ability that you do not need, but that you made. Give it to Him. You do not understand how to use it. He will teach you how to see yourself without condemnation by learning how to look on everything without it. Condemnation will then not be real to you, and all your errors will be forgiven. And from the workbook, Lesson 67, Love Created Me Like Itself. Today's idea is a complete and accurate statement of what you are. This is why you are the light of the world. This is why God appointed you as the world's savior. This is why the Son of God looks to you for his salvation. He is saved by what you are. We will make every effort today to reach this truth about you and to realize fully if only for a moment, that it is the truth. In the longer practice period, we will think about your reality and its wholly unchanged and unchangeable nature. We will begin by repeating this truth about you and then spend a few minutes adding some relevant thoughts, such as, Holiness created me holy. Kindness created me kind. Helpfulness created me helpful. Perfection created me perfect. Any attribute which is in accord with God as he defines himself is appropriate for use. We are trying today to undo your definition of God and replace it with his own. We are also trying to emphasize that you are part of his definition of himself. After you have gone over several such related thoughts, try to let all thoughts drop away for a brief preparatory interval, and then try to reach past all your images and preconceptions about yourself to the truth in you. If love created you like itself, this self must be in you, and somewhere in your mind it is there for you to find. You may find it necessary to repeat the idea for today from time to time to replace distracting thoughts. You may also find that this is not sufficient and that you need to continue adding other thoughts related to the truth about yourself. Yet perhaps you will succeed in going past that and through the interval of thoughtlessness to the awareness of a blazing light in which you recognize yourself as love created you. Be confident that you will do much today to bring that awareness nearer, whether you feel you have succeeded or not. It will be particularly helpful today to practice the idea for the day as often as you can. You need to hear the truth about yourself as frequently as possible because your mind is so preoccupied with false self-images. Four or five times an hour, and perhaps even more, it would be most beneficial to remind yourself that love created you like itself. Hear the truth about yourself in this. Try to realize in the shorter practice periods that this is not your tiny, solitary voice that tells you this. 
This is the voice for God, reminding you of your Father and of yourself. This is the voice of truth, replacing everything that the ego tells you about yourself with the simple truth about the Son of God. You were created by love, like itself. Love created me, like itself. So from today's reading in the text, We realize that the correction of error is of the Holy Spirit, and there is no correction at the level of the ego. There is no correction by the ego. The correction is the relinquishment of the ego. This is the relinquishment of the belief in right and wrong, in form, in good actions and bad actions, the release of good people and bad people. The correction of error is in the mind. This means that your brother your sister is always right, because being a child of God, God created them perfect. No judgment about a brother is real. No judgment about self is real. The Holy Spirit knows that nothing the ego makes means anything. So today we open to this correction. The only way we can perceive the world from a sane perspective is to release all thoughts of time and space, all thoughts of our brothers and sisters, and open our heart, open our mind to the correction of the Holy Spirit, to the truth of our being. And this is the opening. to the awareness of our workbook lesson of the day. Love created me like itself. Today's idea is a complete and accurate statement of what you are. Love created me like itself. This is why you are the light of the world. This is why God appointed you as the world's savior. Love created me like itself. So we can use any variation of that today to recognize the truth of our identity. And substitute any words that come to mind to practice with. Just add some relevant thoughts to today's lesson. For example, eternity created me eternal. Joy created me joyful. Peace 
created me peaceful. Any thoughts that come to mind? Happiness created me happy. These beautiful ideas will undo all definitions of self, all definitions of God, and allow the reality of God and love replace all false definitions. Today we let go of all past images, preconceptions about ourselves and open to the truth. Love created me like itself. Let this beautiful truth replace all distracting thoughts. Go past everything you think you think of time and space. Sink deep into the blazing light. Remember yourself as love created you. You are listening to the voice for God. The voice of truth reminding, patiently reminding of what is real, what is forever true. Love created me like itself. Amen.